Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Paper and Lace Princess and as requested I'm here with some colour and blending tutorial for you guys. Um, what we'll be looking at first is um, some colour pencils and different techniques we can use with our colour pencils. So the piece you're looking at right now is one that um, is currently in progress that I'm doing and it's at varying stages, different elements within the page, on the page, uh, are all at different levels of completion. And that's one thing that we need to understand with colour, no matter what it is that we're working with, is that it is a progression of layering colour down and blending and layering. It, it really is a, a, um, a, a progressive thing. We're not just going to pick up our colour pencil and colour it all in like we did when we were at school. Okay, so some of the techniques that I'd like to share with you with the colour pencils to start off with is how to lay down your very first um, layer of colour, which I like to call a colour wash, like you can see in this area just here. It's just one solid background colour that will start to then build up the rest of our colours onto that. Another thing I'd like to share with you in this tutorial as well is how to build your colours within the same colour family, which we'll look at first, but then also how to do different colours that are totally separate on the colour colour wheel and how we can actually blend those together to get these different sorts of effects. So I'm looking forward to sharing my tips and tricks with you guys. But please note it is not the only way. Um, there are many different um, techniques out there. There's, there's many different styles and forms. It's just one way of doing things and if it helps you in any way, well then I'm very pleased for that. So I thought um, to start with, it would be good if we all worked on similar uh, thing all at once. So obviously something like this would be very difficult because we're, we're not all going to draw the same thing. So what I have decided is if we could all get an A4 sheet of paper and all I've done is I've gone around the edge here and I've given myself a one inch border. Then I've just randomly placed different size circles within that frame and I thought that within these circles we could do different designs and different patterns and we can work on those patterns and designs together. Now we won't do all of them, um, I'll leave some for you guys to fill in with your own designs or your own favourite patterns but it certainly will be a good thing to come back to to remember the techniques that I'm showing you not only can you see them being done and hear what I'm saying, but if you do it as well, it's a really good way to learn. And practice, practice, practice. That's all I can really say. Once you've learnt the basics and mastered those basic techniques, it really is just practice. And the more time you put into something, the better you're going to become. Um, one other just quick tip, if you are very new to colour work, then a little tip that I would like to give you is if you start with some parchment paper, which you can get from any art supply, probably wouldn't go anything less than 120 GSM, but it is a very good medium to work on. It's a wonderful paper, wonderful surface to work on. Blending is so easy on parchment paper. So you're going to pick up the techniques a lot quicker, it's going, you, your efforts will reward you a lot faster and you're going to be encouraged by that. Then you can apply those same techniques to whatever art paper it is that you're using and um, grow from there. But certainly, you know, parchment paper is very easy to blend with. The, the blending mediums that I will show you work particularly well on parchment. They do work on paper as well but as I was saying before, much, much easier on parchment. So um, that's totally up to you what you decide to work on. But if you wanted to go ahead and get a piece ready like this one here, I will meet you back here in a moment and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are back ready to start with some of our patterns. Hopefully we've got all of our circles done. And let's just get started. So I'll zoom in here. As you can see, I have got a few ideas already jotted down but I thought we might draw this one together okay so we'll just grab a little HB pencil grab this one here 
And as you can see, I've just started off with just a circle in the middle. If you want, you could have an oblong circle, which I would much prefer. Let's go in there and just give ourselves a circle. And we'll just divide this little one up into uneven sections. Just like so. As you can see, I am using graphite because I, I do want to come in here later when I'm finished inking and remove all of these um, lines. So all we're going to do is just round off the tops of these little sections. Just touching that centre that we have there. And again we'll do the same to the outer edge. Just rounding off. Just like so. So we can go in now with our pen and outline all of these shapes here and then rub out all our excess pencil lines. And we might do that to say three of the circles so that we can practice this colour technique that we're going to do within this shape a couple of times. Okay, so another one that I've got here, oh, oh, just let me get this in frame. Here as you can see I've just done, it's like a big seashell and I've just got a curled line coming around here and then I've just come in right next to it to give it, give it a space. Okay, so we can do one of those on one of the larger circles. This is going to give us a really good opportunity with this larger space to do some um, blending from a deeper colour right into a lighter colour. So this is going to be a particularly good shape to learn some blending techniques. Okay, and another one I've got ready here is right here. As you can, which way? This way. Oh, I'm good. still got to get used to this new cam camera angle. And all I've done with this one, and I've got another one up the top, which I'll show you in a moment, is I've just drawn some curved lines. Okay, just random, not measured or anything like that. Then I've come back in and I've drawn some lines coming vertically. So I've got some horizontal and then some vertical lines, and they're curved. The ones that are coming across here are all curved. Okay, so then what we're going to do with our pen is fill in these little areas, just rounding off on those corners. So we don't want the sharp corners. Okay. And we will have a space in between all of these little shapes. Now this one's particularly good because as you'll notice that they're quite tight. These little shapes are um, really quite small and so it's good to know how to actually get colour variation within a small area. So with some of the shapes we've got larger areas to fill and some of them we will have smaller shapes to fill. So we can just go ahead and fill that in like that. Okay and I've got another one as I said we'll do repeat the same sort of patterns a couple of times but you can just vary it slightly. Um, just trying to find where I am here on camera. Okay, here we are. So as you see, I've done another, it's just a variation of that shape that we've just done before. And once again, within these, um, these lines, we'll just come in with our pen leaving a space but filling those in with our pen. Okay so if we want to go ahead and get those done actually there is one more I have got here and I have done this one here it's all like filled with little worm like shapes just little comas almost like a paisley elongated paisley shape and we'll just fill in a circle with those and we'll come in with these actually we can just put in some guidelines on them first okay and the same thing we'll just do 
that fill in shape. And once again it is good to just leave a little space in between these so that we can have like a background colour so we can push those um, little nodules here, we can push those out forward with our colour. So if we wanted to go ahead and get some of these shapes all mapped in then we can come back and start the fun stuff, the colour. Okay. See you soon. Okay, so we're back ready to start the fun stuff, and that's the colour. But we'll just, first of all, just take a quick look at some of the supplies that we're going to need. Okay, so one of the first things I've got here is just a little piece of um, kneadable eraser. And when you're working with colour pencil, it's good to use this. Sometimes we lay down a little bit too much colour, and instead of going in with a hard eraser or rubber, um, which is going to remove quite, you know, uh, harsh lines within within the colour. With your little needle bit of eraser, you, you just pop it on and lift it up. Pop it on, lift it up like so. And what it does is it, it just lifts that layer, la outer layer of colour up off your work. So it's a very handy little, um, little tool to have. You can knead it into all sorts of shapes. So you can get it into a nice sharp point. And you can come in and get some nice fine little lines there for some highlights or, or what have you. Handy little tool is your kneadable eraser. The other thing we'll need when we're working with pencil are some paper stumps. And the size is really up to you what you like to use. I, I usually use a, a few different various sizes from a, a fine one down to probably a medium point. Um, and I do like the paper stump rather than the tortillion. Um, they're slightly different, but um, the paper stump, I find it um, just absorbs my blending fluid a, a little better and they last a lot longer. Very easy to clean up when, you, when your tips are dirty with colour. I've just got a, a nail file here that I keep purposely for my stumps and I'll just give it a little clean off like so and then that's ready to go with whatever other colour you want, might want to use. Okay, the other thing is if you've got a brush, now I use this little art brush here, but look, a blush, that's a bit hard to say, isn't it? A blusher brush. Um, just make sure, obviously, that it's been washed and it's clean or, or get a new one. And the reason I like a brush is I brush away my excess pencil dust, or if I do use my eraser, I brush away that dust. That's going to ensure that I don't rub all my or all the oil from my fingers across my art surface and it's not going to smudge my work either so it just keeps a nice clean surface so a brush is a very handy thing to have obviously if we're working with color pencils we're going to need exactly that some color pencils and the pencils of choice for myself are actually um, polychromos and prismacolor and throughout these tutorials when I use pencil, these will, will be the pencils I'll use. Um, having had my art store, I've been able to try many, many different brands. And I must say, I, I come back to these all the time. They're just a beautiful pencil. The quality is, is um, really up there. In my opinion, it's, it's probably one of the best. So you get a really nice lay down a colour, even lay down a colour. There is no variation from... If you, you, know, you buy one pencil, you go back to buy another one, it is exactly the same colour. Um, and they, they sharpen to a nice point. Now you can see here the points that I've got on these pencils are quite substantial. And for any good colour work with pencil, you really need to get into the habit of making sure your pencil tips are nice and sharp. So let me try and bring that up a little bit there. If you can see that. Now I'll show you on this one here, this would be a normal, where am I, here we go, a normal sharpened tip from a normal sharpener and the one next to it shows you the difference. So you can see this one here has a, a much longer, sharper point. And so this is the sort of thing we're aiming for. And to get that sort of point you need a sharpener that has got a long blade. So right next to it would be a standard size sharpener. So the one here on this side, you can see how much longer that blade is. And that's the secret to getting a nice long point to your pencil. 
okay very very important um, you know I probably can't stress that enough sharp pencil your works going to come out lovely you got a blunt pencil well no it's, it's you're just not going to get the same lay down, lay down of color okay and now in the techniques that I will be showing you um, in this tutorial I will be using a blending fluid now there's so many blending fluids out there on the market there's ones from, made from citrus based things like zest it here there's ones made from uh, oils like lavender oils and things there's, there's a multitude of them and they can be quite expensive um, what I have found and it is my favorite and it is what I choose to use and as you can see here this is just an old empty cosmetic bottle that I've had all you girls that I've taught over the years you'll recognize this little bottle and I've just cut up a piece of kitchen sponge and I've, I've put that down inside the bottle little container and what I have filled this with is the jam of all blending fluids and it is simply an artist oil painting odorless solvent or easily put a white uh, white fluid white spirits rather white spirits so if you go to any art supply store and ask them for some white spirits or some artist solvent you'll get a um, 500 ml bottle for a few dollars it is it, it really is my favorite blending fluid of all time and a fraction of the cost so you just will need an empty little container and a little piece of um, sponge now the zested one actually it comes with a big sponge in it like so so you just get your paper stump and just you know moisten the tip of your paper stump and then go on to your work and start blending so this is the reason I've got the the sponge in there you just get a nice pickup of fluid your, your stumps not going to be saturated is you're just going to be picking up enough on the tip to do your blending okay so that's about all we're going to need so let's pop this all to the side and let's get coloring okay so the world doesn't exist now girls it's just you and me and color pencils sound good okay let me just get this all here in frame and I might zoom in a little bit how's that I'm getting better aren't I it's just this angle it's a new angle and I'm still trying to get used to it okay so we'll start off with this little flower type um, pattern that we've got here and we've um, already inked it all up so it's ready to go now with our color I've chosen to, to use a um, like a soft pinky salmon color now with our color one of the secrets is we always need minimum of three in the one family so we'll need a light color we'll need a medium color and we'll need our deepest value okay so there are three values to um, each color that we will be using um, we can have we can add more than that we could come in and add some highlight colors we could add some some colors to to give it a more of a pop around the outside more definition but minimum three colors and so we'll be starting off with our minimum and working with our three colors and we'll be learning how to build those colors to give us some depth so we'll start off with our lightest color and you can see my tip is nice and sharp and we're going to just start with one of these sections so each one of these little petals will be done separately as an individual little thing so our base color or our color wash the very first color that we lay down is going to cover the entire shape or the entire area and as you can see I'm just going around in little circles just so I get a nice smooth even lay down of color and it is very soft it is very pale but it is the lightest of all our colors so if we're going to have a highlighted area this is the color we're going to see but because it is the lightest color our eye will tell us 
that it's a it's a shine line it's a it's a white line we're going to see it a lot lighter than what it really is so for this one here I might just do three of the petals that will give you enough hopefully it'll give you enough to to see what I'm doing here and of course when you're doing it yourself the information really does sink in it really does and it really is all about practice now turn your work I apologize for me turning my work but when I color I simply must do that and the last little petal so a little circular motion nothing hard just relaxing filling that whole area in and we are aiming to get an even coverage okay now you can see there's quite a lot of pencil dust, well maybe you can't see, but there is quite a bit of pencil dust left on this here and this is where I would normally come in with my brush and, and brush that away but because we're going to blend all of this colour down now I'm just going to leave that there so I'll just grab my blending fluid <coughs> excuse me I'll just get the tip of my paper stump and just touch it to that sponge as you can see it just absorbs that fluid up now we're going to come in here and we're going to do exactly the same thing now what the blending fluid actually does <coughs> excuse me is these pencils are actually a wax base so it's dissolving all the wax that is within the pencil that's laid down onto the paper <clears throat> and so we're getting what is more like a painted surface than a coloured in surface so all those little pencil lines they just all magically disappear just need a little bit more there and so we have a beautiful smooth base to be able to work on now you can, there's nothing stopping you from going in and layering up your base colour or your colour wash. You, you certainly can do that. But I'm happy with this light, light coverage. And when I'm happy that it's all blended down, we can move on to our, me <coughs> excuse me, our medium value. So the technique that we will be doing here is it's totally up to you what you are comfortable with but we will be doing flicks. We're not going to be colouring in solid little lines and solid little areas. Okay so some people find it easier to flick away from themselves. Others find it easier to flick into themselves. I myself like to flick away. So I'll turn my piece. Make sure I'm still in frame. And there I am. Okay. Okay, so I've just zoomed in on that a little bit. And so what we're going to be doing with our medium value is from where the, the darkest point is going to be. And on this, it's going to be down in the center. We're going to start to flick. So the, the movement really is in the wrist. Okay, so we're just pencil touching the paper. We're moving it up. And as we're moving up, we're slowly lifting off. So we're getting that gradual lay down of colour and this is what makes for a nice even transition between values when you're starting take your time nice slow even little flicks okay now to define this petal I'm going to come up the side just up here this is just an optional thing And because we've got that lovely sharp point on our pencil, we're going to have these lovely, I keep saying lovely, don't I, but it is. Let's just get rid of that dust. 
I'm going to have this really nice soft area. See, it's going to, to vary from dark, going right up gradually up to where it's just disappearing into our base colour. So I'm just going to build that a little bit more. <coughs> Okay, get rid of that dust and now we'll go in with our darker value and we'll go over that area except this time we probably only go going to go up say two-thirds of the way so we're not going to go right up to where our second second value was that was the tip of my pencil there so I'm just going to resharpen that Pushed a little bit too heavy. I'm a bit keen. So it does require a little bit of patience. But the results are well, well worth it. Get rid of that excess dust. Now this is purely optional. It really is up to you. You could blend that with your um, blending fluid again if you wanted. You can leave it as it is, which I intend to do. But what I do like to do is put down two layers of colour. So I'm going to step down again now to my medium shade and go back over that darker one we just laid down and back over into where the first layer of this colour was. And as you can see, that's starting to really add some depth. And then back again with our darkest value. Little flicks. Little flicks. going to come up around here just slightly. Very fine line. Just so the eye tells us that that is all one, one piece, one petal. Okay, now the thing we could do if we wanted is we could come back with our lighter shade and flick down into the colours we've just laid down. Okay, so let's just repeat that process. Just turn this around slightly. Once again, I'll just sharpen that tip. It really only takes like a quarter of a turn to, um, to get that tip right back. And the other thing you might notice too is that as I'm flicking I might stop and, and I'm rotating my pencil and then I rotate and then I rotate because what that's doing is it's moving me around on the tip here to a nice sharp point again I'm not just wearing the um, colour down on one side I just need to move this slightly around a little bit more oh, I'm out, totally out of frame now, there we go Yep. So we're laying it down and we're flicking, flicking up into the lighter area and come up around that side. Same with this. Now normally I wouldn't outline everything in black like this if I was um, doing colour work, but I mean you can. There's, but just for the sake of being able to see things a little easier on camera I have gone ahead and outlined everything in black. In fact when I'm colouring I very rarely use black. I'd much rather use my greys or if I want it really dark I will mix in an indigo. Very deep dark blue. And that gives us a depth but it's still, um, it, it's not deadening the, the look of what um, what you're colouring. Sometimes black can just be that little bit too harsh. But it does have its place. 
So here I'm just going in with my deeper colour, making sure I've got those little pieces right up there at the end there. And flick, flick, flick. Remember our darker colour, we're only going to go about two thirds of the way. Back with my medium value. The other thing you can do too, it's, um, when you're layering your colour, is you can just use your paper stump. Another thing that gives you a really nice soft blend are uh, aloe vera tissues, believe it or not. And I like to just wrap a little bit of the tissue around a cotton tip and just give it a little rub. And that helps blend your colours in beautifully. Okay, and let's just come in here a little of our lighter value. Let's get that darker value and I'm just going to just run it very, very, very fine line. Don't want it very visible. I just want enough there to give me that outline. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll colour in the whole thing doing this and you'll notice how it all starts to come together. And then we'll come back, we'll have a look at how we can do the centre in this. So I'll stop the video, I'll go ahead, I'll colour all these in and I'll, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we're back now and I've got all of my little um, flower shape all coloured in and as you can see I've been a bit naughty and added another layer of colour. Let's just try and zoom in on this so you can see it a little better. So all I've done is I've done those three colours that we did initially and I've just gone in with one more shade, just that tiny bit darker and just blended that in. Now each time you do layer another value, a deeper value, you don't want to go as high as you did with the previous value. So exactly the same three steps as we did before the three steps, but I've just gone in, I've just added that little bit more. Okay, so let's have a look at doing something a little bit different for the centre area. And this is where we can use colours to, um, to our advantage. So I've got a really nice, um, what's this one? It's an apple green. No, it's an earth green. Yellowish earth green. Okay, so what we're going to do is just layer down a nice even colour here over the entire thing. Centre and all. Trying to do a little circular motion where we can, but obviously when we get into these little points we are a little limited. And you might be thinking that is looking pretty bad, but let's just wait and see what we can do with that. So I'll grab my paper stump, I'll just clean off the tip of it here, got a nice clean sharp point, and I'll just get a little bit more blending fluid on that. So we'll come in here and we'll blend out that green. Now be careful not to um, touch those petals where we've already coloured. We don't want to be dragging that colour in here. It wouldn't be a disaster if we did, but we, we will try not to do that. So there's our base colour laid down. Just going to clean that stump off a little bit more and just remove that colour because sometimes you find when you're working in a small area, 
and you're using your blending fluid, really all you're doing is moving the colour from one spot to another. So sometimes it's worth cleaning your stump, getting that colour off and going back in. And I'm a lot happier with that. Okay, so now to add some shadow there in the centre, I'm just going to use a very dark grey. And I'm going to come in here and just outline where those petals are. Or where they, where they, well I suppose they start, not end, don't they? Just to help that pop a little bit. Very fine guys, very, very fine line. And I'll do the same for that centre. Once again, I might just want to blend that out a little bit. Now, actually I need to fix this stump. I'll just move this out of the way. It might be a good thing for you to see this. But when my stump needs just getting all blunt and, and burnt on the end so I just grab a, a craft knife and I cut into that stump and I cut away from myself just like so just remove all of that and then I just get my file And just smooth that that surface off. There we go nice new tip and point on our stump, ready to go. Okay, so I'll bring our piece back into frame. There we go. I might move that out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'll just moisten that a tiny bit. And just blend that darkest colour there, ever so slightly. Okay, so I'll let you guys do that and I'll meet you back here in a moment. Okay, so we've got all of that blended out and we're happy with the, the result of that. So what I'm going to do is just go in with a really deep violet and just give a slight outline just so we can separate these elements so we'll have the centre we'll have these little pieces here and we'll, then we'll have the petals just grab my blending fluid and as you can see it is quite subtle and deepen that up again. do is just wipe that tip off on a scrap piece of paper to remove the excess colour and then just come back into the centre and blend away some of that last colour we've just laid down just so the circle itself is shaded on the outer rim. Okay so what I've gone ahead and done and I've, I've just grabbed an indigo as I was saying before rather than using black I do like to use an indigo or a grey and I've just outlined 
all of these little spare areas, all the negative space here. And I've just done that. Once again, nice sharp tip. Let's just come back in and blend that. So the outline of the indigo will be a lot darker than what the centre of that negative space is. So it's still all to the background, but even the background has some depth to it. So I'm quite happy with that. If you wanted it darker, you could go in and layer up another layer. But I kind of like how it, it's a little translucent in the middle of that space there. So that's a little bit more dimension, I think. Okay, so this here is just a, a really fun way you can do your centers because it is like a flower I'm just going to go in with my micron and this is a number one micron and it is black I'm just going to randomly place dots paying more attention to the outer rim but also making sure that the center is evenly covered As I said, this is just optional, but it is quite quite a nice textured look. So then I'll, I'll come in with a white gel pen. And I just need to get that going again. And I'm just going to stipple just all these dots. And the reason we lay down that black first is so that this white will really show up. And why we want the white to really show up is because we're going to put another layer on top. Now you can use a red. Red looks very good for centres. Or a yellow. So I've got this yellow. And I'm just going to go in and just... does give you some dimension there. So I'll try and zoom in on that so you can see that a little closer. It's a bit out of focus there. There you go. So you can see it does give a nice textured centre. The other thing you can do too is, is spread some of these little dots out onto these petals. Just a few in an odd Odd, odd spots and odd numbers. Okay, so there's the first little um, little circle done with some basic techniques. So we should go ahead now and complete the other two so that we're practicing laying down that color just like that. We'll come back and we'll have a look at um, doing this big, the big um, sea swirl. The, let me zoom out. So this one here, this is what we will look at next. Okay, so have fun practicing your little flowers and um, I'll meet you back here shortly and we'll do this little um, swirl. <laughs>